So my journey today brings me to the beautiful land of the rising sun, Japan. Somewhere deep in the Hokkaido mountains at a top secret penis reconstruction facility for men or women unlucky enough to have tiny knobs and who want more respect in the workplace. Because we all know that in the workplace, knob size is king. I got out of bed like a reanimated corpse and headed over to take a look-see at my patient profile. Two things stood out to me. The first was that my name was apparently Sodas, the guy I was sent here to kill, and the second was that my profile pic and my actual head looked nothing like each other. Yes, I spent every cent to my name on fillers and facial implants and I regret nothing. There was a nice breeze blowing in from the balcony, so I headed out to cop some of that sweet, sweet icy cold fresh air and having eroded away almost the entirety of my nasal cartilage from years of consuming high-grade food products through my nose, I sucked it all up like a champ and then cracked out my handy cam so I could zoom into my neighbor's bedroom and see what he does for fun. Dangerous amounts of alcohol and sleeping pills. My kind of guy. Before heading back in, however, I spent a little bit of time leaning over my balcony railing, wondering what would happen if I just so happened to dive off head first onto the rocky snow-capped landscape below. Alas, I still had objectives to complete, but I kept it on my potential list of fun things to do later. I decided to watch some telly, but realized due to the absence of any reflection in the TV that I was probably already dead. Ed. Excellent. Nevertheless, that wasn't going to stop me from watching my favorite show, Real ha <laughs> House Husbands of Yugoslavia. Much to my dismay, however, it seemed like they were only showing the censored version over here in Japan, where everyone had a towel on. <laughs> Needless to say, I shut up the... <laughs> shut up the TV with no regrets. Now, I like the feeling of taking a big, huge, massive dump just as much as the next maniac, but the Japanese were onto something. They found a way to make crapping even better to take it to that next level of pleasure, to experience Nirvana. I like to call it disco in the shitter. The way the musical fountain just blasts away chunks of turd that refuse to let go of your ass hair is truly life-changing. I also discovered that certain outfits seem to accentuate my angles and curves more than some others. I made a vow then and there to never wear anything else ever again that doesn't make me look exactly like the guy from Spider-Man or John Wick. Also, ever since I was young, I felt a strong affinity towards porcelain bathroom fittings and the sink in this bathroom was no different. It was calling my name, asking me to pour its watery goodness all over the floor and to just leave it on because I'm an asshole. So I did it. And then after having completely destroyed my entire room like a rock star, I headed out into the corridor to cause a little more chaos. As I strolled around the common areas of the hospital, I started to notice something. No matter where I went, people were buried face first in their cell phones, completely oblivious to the outside world. Perhaps that explained why they all had small penises. <laughs> Venuses. Needless to say, a facility such as this up in the freezing cold Hokkaido mountains wouldn't be complete if it didn't capitalize on and make the most of the beautiful, soothing, natural hot springs that freely flowed beneath the ground surface. Hashtag... <laughs> This is pretty sus, bro. As I walked through the indoor spa area, I accidentally pressed the wrong button and drowned a man face, fir <laughs> face first in the little bath thingy. It caused everyone to panic and flee, but on the plus side, it allowed me to urinate in the water without any judgment from anyone whatsoever. Now, long, long before becoming a hit, man, I'd spent many years fantasizing about becoming a multi-million dollar culinary sensation where I'd spank my meat and sprinkle salt all over it, driving people wild on social media and becoming an immortalized meme. I figured that this was a good opportunity for me to do something at least somewhat similar, but instead of salt, I'd use the poisonous glands of the lethal fugu fish. Now, I needed a disguise, and the culturally appropriating white sushi chef in the canteen seemed pretty keen to get naked for me. There was a little bit of UFC here and a little bit of UFC there. You know how it goes sometimes. And at a glance, the meal room looked completely normal. But upon closer inspection, what I had actually done was create a mountain of dead and unconscious bodies that provide me with the endless outfit changes I need for the remainder of this video. I headed into the bathroom, shanked a guy, practiced my knife throwing skills on the staircase and then did some MMA. And though I had previously roasted people for having their faces glued to their mobile phones, on this particular occasion, it saved me from needing to go Super Saiyan 3 on everybody on the floor above me. Still, they all had tiny penises and I... <laughs> 
had a big one. The bathroom was looking somewhat unkempt and untidy, and rather than leaving all the bodies scattered about the floor like an amateur, I decided to arrange them in a formation that I like to call the leg spread party. I then turned on every single tap and flooded the entire lower level of the building because I like my socks soaking wet. I'd heard tales of a legendary sushi chef that worked in the upstairs restaurant, so I went to investigate. After all, who doesn't enjoy a nice succulent Chinese meal in a Japanese restaurant? made by a white guy. What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? And the way he worked those carrots, an essential and integral component in every single Japanese dish known to man, was nothing short of spectacular. And again, the fact that he was also a white guy who just so happened to have a do-rag on was spectacular again. I then spent several long moments staring at his sushi, contemplating my existence, my mortality, and most importantly, how he'd so cleverly managed to hide all that carrot in these tiny bite-sized morsels of succulent Chinese cuisine. Just then, the Yakuza lady who I was commissioned to escort to the afterlife rocked up asking for some fugu fish sushi, which instantly gave birth to a genius idea inside of my big shiny bald head. <laughs> I rushed downstairs to my mountain of bodies for a change of clothes and then gave the two-finger shuffle to a nice fistful of warm, sticky rice. Naturally, I also lathered it up real generously with enough fugu fish poison to completely wipe out the entire resort. Um, excuse me. Could I ask you for some fugu roll? A thousand apologies, miss, but hospital administration has put a ban on pufferfish. There was an, um, incident... Only last week, a kitchen apprentice took upon himself to... Uh, well, I can't even bear to say it out loud. Well, I'm sure you can make an exception this once. Excuse me. Delicate sushi can be savoured right here. I just prepared a fresh batch. Is this fugu? I knew you would come around eventually. Good for you. I hope you like it. My colleague is a straight arrow. Me, I say it's good to live dangerously. You took the words right out of my... <coughs> And this is why it's always better to just have a steak. Fugu fish poison wasn't the only poison I was carrying around in my pants, however, and so I resurrected my target from the grave, just so I could poison her again, but this time with rat poison. I darted across the room to the other countertop and generously dumped all my fish guts into the bowl of peanuts on the table. I figured that in doing this, I could poison my target while simultaneously poisoning the hospital director for absolutely no reason whatsoever. However. Then I just stood there masquerading as a sushi chef while chaos unfolded all around me. That taste. What in the world is that? Oh, oh. Oh, oh my, my, my stomach. I found my target staring into the toilet bowl and figured she wanted to go for a swim but was too scared to jump in due to it potentially being too cold. So, being a supportive kind of fellow, I gently encouraged her to be brave and to test the waters. Head first till it was empty. Her bodyguard, however, was still waiting outside the toilet door. So I enticed him into coming inside so I could make everything look like an accident. I felt that it needed to be just a little bit susser in order to be convincing though. This did the trick. After all the action that had unfolded in such a short span of time, I was feeling pretty cooked. So I headed back to my room to lay down and roleplay a corpse for just a little while. It wasn't long before I got bored though and decided to jump off my balcony and scale the side of the facility to the balcony of the adjoining room that housed my neighbor with the apparent drinking and pill problem. I figured that a doctor's disguise would be a solid way for me to move around the hospital without drawing too much attention to myself. And so I used the emergency help buzzer next to my drunkard of a neighbor's bed to get some medical assistance. I skipped seven years of medical school and instantly became a doctor myself, then taught this drunk cowboy the benefits of base jumping off your balcony without a parachute. I then stole his packet of durries and very stealthily crept my way back into the restaurant and noticed Yakuza lady heading into one of the private booths. It was also a well-known fact that she too was a durry puncher. I crept into the adjoining private booth, jumped the partition and swapped out her empty packet of smokes for a fresh one. As I followed the nicotine addicts to her smoking spot of choice, I couldn't help but feel like she could have picked a better place than directly next to a ginormous leaking barrel of gasoline. Maybe it'll be fine, I optimistically thought to myself. 
or maybe not. At this point, there are only two places left and I had it managed to completely turn upside down. The morgue, where the amount of potential chaos was already severely limited by the fact that almost everyone there was already dead, and the operating theater, which I would get to a little bit later. Seeing as how these two gentlemen seem to like dead people so much, I inducted them into the dead people gang, stole their clothes, and headed into their office where I found some notes that talked about a neurochip that was planted in the morgue curator's head that had the ability to regulate the flow of serotonin to his brain at the flip of a switch. Naturally, I headed into the sleeping pods where the remote control was supposedly located and hurriedly rushed back to the morgue so I could troll the curator's mental health in the name of science. It's Ito. You call. Oh my! This space! The colors! Oh, the shapes! It's beautiful! Exactly as it needs to be! Oh, a place for everything and everything in its proper place! Oh my goodness! Oh, why haven't I noticed before? I need to share this with my babies. Now, given the somewhat fringe medical research supporting the manipulation of somebody else's brain via neurochip and remote control, I was concerned that perhaps this would be somewhat detrimental to his long-term health. As it turned out, however, the gun in my pocket was more dangerous than the chip and remote in his head ever could have been. I also heard down the grapevine that contaminating stem cells with fugu fish poison was also a pretty good way to kill a man. So obviously, I snuck into the stem cell room <laughs> and contaminated it with fugu fish poison. The execution, no pun intended, while somewhat unorthodox, produced exceptionally pleasant results. 10 out of 10 would do again. He probably wouldn't though. My contributions to the medical world didn't quite end there though when I headed back to the organ storage room to shoot a free throw with the dude's brand new heart. Now, Hokkaido was probably sick of me at this point, but I wasn't sick of Hokkaido. There were still so many different different ways to make my target's lives absolutely miserable, and this one involved me knocking out the yoga instructor and stealing his yoga pants. I really can't bother with this. Please don't! I used this disguise to pretend that I was a yoga instructor myself and proceeded to give my target the best downward dog she'd ever had. I also for a brief moment forgot where I was and thought that I was in Sparta. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a bathroom far, far away, the director was spewing up his guts as a result of eating some peanuts that were seasoned with rat poison, something I obviously had nothing to do with. I may, however, have had something to do with him drinking the entire contents of the toilet bowl. Now, this time of year in Hokkaido, the sauna is considered a great place to take a load off and unwind. That is, of course, until some maniac comes along and cranks it up to 70 degrees Celsius. Even so, the door is there for a reason, and if you just just so happen to find it too hot, you can always get the f*** out. Unless some psychopath locks you in there and then you just evaporate into nothingness. Shh, steam sounds. Now I admit, female bowl cut and I had gotten off to a rocky start, so I invited her to meet me on the ledge of the cable car station to discuss K-pop bands and cryptocurrency. And that went really well. <laughs> It also gave me the opportunity to shimmy my way over to her balcony so I could teach her bodyguard just like the cowboy about the pleasures of base jumping off your balcony without a parachute. His mates seemed pretty keen too, so I taught them as well. Bye guys, have a nice trip. As I searched her room, I noticed that she'd very carelessly left a USB stick in her laptop then had a list of all the people that my other target had killed in his younger days as an ICA agent. And I took it because I could. Now I had an idea, but it first required me to become a surgeon. And to become a surgeon, I needed to get close to a surgeon so I could bump him off and steal his clothes. This mummified internet celebrity right here who just had an everything job seemed like a fairly good way to accomplish that goal. I first lured him into the toilet with the relaxing sounds of the rainforest so I could knock him out cold and steal his clothes. After all, nobody can resist a waterfall. And with that done, I headed to his doctor's appointment, bandages and all. After all, they don't call me the master of disguise for nothing. Also, I'm pretty sure that nobody calls me that. Nevertheless, this appointment was the opportunity I needed to practice that rad new BJJ choke hold that I learnt at class a couple of weeks prior. And now that I was a surgeon, I was able to move freely through the final area of the map that I hadn't yet explored, the operating room. And as you'd expect, waiting for me there was none other than the head surgeon himself, who I decided wasn't fit for the position and who needed to be replaced by me. As the new head surgeon, I hopped straight onto the robotic surgery control panel, which I assumed functioned just like a UFO catcher at time zone. 
Except this time we're piercing somebody's heart with a ginormous needle and sucking them dry of all their juices. Next, I headed to the server room to sabotage the mainframe, which much to my surprise required nothing more than a penchant for unnecessary amounts of reckless destruction and absolutely no computer know-how whatsoever. Which was great, because I'm an idiot. This allowed me to fine-tune the surgical robot to ensure the best possible outcome for my pain. <laughs> <laughs> for my patient. I also completely buggered up the defibrillator by overcharging it to 400%. That was pretty cool. And as I was now starting to run out of ideas and options, I felt like it was time for my final hurrah and to use that USB stick that I stole from Yakuza Lady's laptop. By installing the contents of the drive on the head surgeon's ginormous tablet computer and just leaving it there open for him to find, I was opening up a Pandora's box of chaos that I knew I would never be able to shut. And I liked that. On the list of people that my target, currently laying on the operating table, killed during his youngest years as an ICA agent was no other than the head surgeon's very own father. Very, very spicy. Just the way I like ye. I followed the helicopter pilot to a secluded location, then stole his clothes and tossed him off. <laughs> Hold on, wait, what? Why, you may ask? That's easy, because he was a drug dealer that was supplying the head surgeon with the pinger dingers he was taking. I took him down to my secret pill stash, which for some bizarre reason was in the security office, and proceeded to watch him wolf down multiple bottles of pills in their entirety. The plot twist was that it was 100% pure meth, and meth has a tendency to make people a little bit agitated. Right here, right now, Eric Sodas is going to... And wouldn't you know it, he hopped straight onto that robo-surgery control panel and impaled my target through the heart, then sucked him dry. Sus, bro. I woke up shortly after, dazed and confused, wearing my favorite suit, looking chiseled as f and lying on a stretcher in the morgue. As I snuck my way upstairs to the operating room, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I needed to sneak my way in between his legs where I would finally perform... <laughs> my face reveal. I guess I was significantly more chiseled and sexy than my target ever imagined I could be. And he just died on the operating table from jizzing himself <laughs> a little bit too much. As I got ready to pack up my crap and leave Hokkaido, I realized that in this timeline, Yakuza woman was still alive and there was one assassination method that I hadn't yet used. It would require some bang bang pew pew in order to freak her out and get her running. Now with her on the cable car, it was only a matter of a couple of well-placed shots before gravity would take over and do the rest. Without a doubt, however, this was probably the single worst gun in Hitman 3 to use for precise long distance shooting, but it made up for it with an adorable little quacking sound it made every time I shot it. Though as I got ready to board my private stolen helicopter, I couldn't help but feel a tinge of sadness. Sure, Hokkaido was cold, everybody looked at me like I was sus and I was only here on business. But I certainly did have a wonderful time. 